Happy Sunday, beautiful people. Happy Sunday. We back. Whew. Boy. Pull myself together here. I'm supposed to start started like 30 minutes ago. Y'all was trying to pull myself together. Definitely a whole lot better. I think I'm going to go ahead and push through today because I was like, mm, maybe we should come back tomorrow. But I figure I'm kind of I'm kind of good. I'm kind of good. The morning's been a little rough sometimes, but once I get going, I'm good. Two. All right, beautiful people. Get this air kick up. We got it started. I was cool. As soon as I hit live, I just started getting hot. This is my thing. It really is. Because I was fine. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, happy Sunday. It is June the 12th, 2022, day 131 of the year four of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. Some of the four-year consecutive day count, day 1,149. Today, y'all, hopefully we're going to get through a little bit more to Owaspi than what we did on Thursday uh, on page 202. And then if we get time, I don't know, I may just stay in Owaspi today. We may get to the meditation book, depending on um, where we at after 30 minutes, if I want to keep on reading or just go ahead and pause it and move over to the meditation. But we'll see when we get there. All right, Father, we bless you for keeping us in good health and teaching us how to properly care for our bodies even when things try to attack us thank you for the wisdom on how to get it back on track online how it should be all right lavon shalom shalom yeah i'm feeling a little bit better a little bit better alicia hey girl hey auntie shalom shalom hope uncle jb doing a little bit better mom shalom shalom all right y'all we get to rocking and rolling okay i just turned this air down a, a little bit more i got it on 64 like I really was out, I'm starting to get hot again. I really think it's because uh, I'm live. It's really a mad thing for real, I think, because I was fine. I really was. Okay, probably because I'm just sitting here doing more talking and stuff. I'm going to get myself together. It'll cool down in a second. I'm actually good. I don't, I don't know how my voice was sounding raspy. Thursday, as the day went on, on Thursday, it got worse and worse. I literally sound like Billy D. Williams. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, what in the world is happening to my voice? And so, um, well, I took a hot shower, using hot rags on my throat and stuff. Um, uh, I was taking all my all the bitters and everything that I had got from um Yaki. It actually came like a couple weeks ago, but I hadn't started it. I show started it Thursday. Everything that came in that box, I was taking. And I like uh, black seed oil, but I, I really hate the way it tastes. But this is the first time I actually ever got some from Yaki. I used to order from um, other places, but Yaki's, although it's still, it's not as strong smelling or as strong tasting as some of the other ones I got. Um, but it still had like that same type of taste. But it worked. I was able to get it down and it didn't, his didn't leave the, this horrible aftertaste in my mouth and my throat for like hours you know i was just like oh this is, this is great so i've been taking that every day i got this uh intercellular cleanse he got i got like this whole kit right um so it has an uh, intercellular cleanse it has of course the three bitters in it it's uh one to detox the liver one to detox the pancreas like everything it cleansing all the systems right so that was like um there was seven different capsules with the stuff. Well, it was it, three different bottles of capsules, but each of them you take in like um, two of them, you take three and one of them you take one. So that's seven, seven capsules, three times a day. I'm like, oh, my goodness. But it was working super quick because whatever was trying to kick me plus the plus the three bitters and stuff. Yaki stuff was kicking it back. Like I could feel, I could feel like the war going on inside my body and stuff. But I can say, along with the juice and um, 
it it really works extremely fast extremely fast look at my glasses um extremely fast so definitely feel a whole lot better um i definitely think something is going around um i was originally thinking maybe my kids had picked it up because when we was out at the park around all that whole group of kids the other day and i thought they had bought it back but um apparently it's a lot of people in this hotel that's sick because the staff started walking around like since we've been here ain't nobody really walking around with like their gloves and masks on so i noticed it like day before yes i was like something is definitely happening and the guy across the hall suddenly he hacking up a freaking lung and stuff I'm like, oh my god and so i'm like oh yeah so um, I finally, I kept forgetting to get the lights off, but everybody been washing their hands and all that good stuff, bathing, you know, like we normally do. But I got some, um, the Lysol yesterday, the spray Lysol when I went to, um, Walgreens, came back, was getting out the elevator. I was just spraying everything, walking down the hall, spraying people doing knobs and stuff like, psh, 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 spraying the hallway and everything. So ain't nobody got time for this, right? We ain't come here. To, uh, to to get sick from other people's foolishness, right? So, yeah, but for the most part, the kids are good. They just have, like, stuffy noses. Like, Josh is, like, 100% fine. Isaiah, he's fine. Bella, she had a little bit of a stuffy nose last night. Um, yeah, but everybody, everybody else pretty much cool. So, I feel like I'm, like, almost back at 100, you know, plus. Um, I got some old sea moss and stuff from my mama. I ain't started taking that yet. I had to go get my own... I would just take it, but I just don't, I really just don't want to take it by, you know, on the spoon, although I probably should. I'm just going to put it in a smoothie, you know, but I got to go get my, my blender today. I just got my citrus juicer, you know, so I haven't been able to make any kind of blenders. I mean, um, blended drinks. So I'm definitely going to get that today because I'm going to be putting like four scoops of sea moss in every one to help finish kicking everything out and replace the minerals or whatever that my body is currently lacking. All right, so, but enough of that. So, I just wanted to do that and make sure my voice was really, like, cool, you know, because although I've been here talking to them, not like a steady, constant talk like I do for, like, an hour or so in the morning. So, I just wanted to make sure I won't go, like, cough and hack and stuff. So, I think I'm good. I'm good. All right, so let's jump right back in here into the Book of Frag of Patty, page 202, chapter 24. Yeah, I think I'm good. You know, I was coming on at 7.32, but then I was like, oof, uh, did I do it too soon? I should have did the third day. I don't know. Just talk my mind back into it. I was like, Pam, you okay? Let's go. We can do this. But I did push it out to 8 o'clock because I was moving up a little bit. So I just wanted to really make sure, you know, that I was good. But I think I'm good. I'm good. All right, y'all. So chapter 24, page 202 at the top. Hoab rejoiced not, and he alone of all people assembled was burdened in soul. He said, Jehovah, thou hast rebuked me, and I am cast down. Thou hast shown me in thy son, Hapacha, one of thy gods in the lowest heavens. And Hapacha, or it could be Hapaka, I think I was saying Hapaka. And Hapaka, thy son, hath maintained his kingdom unto thee till this dawn of light have come. Yet thou gavest into my keeping a kingdom far higher than this, even Zoredho, and I went down as a child that falleth asleep. My kingdom forgot thee. My people ceased to sing songs unto thy name. We buried ourselves in darkness, and thou hast chosen me to be the next succeeding God of earth and her heavens. How shall I fulfill thy commandments? How shall I know the way to choose gods and lords under me who will be steadfast and zealous? And he thus communed with Jehovah. Fragapati said unto him, Through faith are all things accomplished. Without faith, all things are uncertain. He who saith, I know Jehovah, liveth and reigneth. Hath he who saith, I know Jehovah, liveth and reigneth, hath said wisely. But he who saith, I go forth in thee, O Jehovah, for I know thou wilt accomplish have said much more. For his words maintain the power of the Father in him. When the morning of the third day had come, Hapaka called the host from recreation to labor, and the Esenars chanted a hymn of rejoicing. And after that, Hapaka said to thee, 
O Jehovah, are all things committed, even as from thee they came forth. Thy voice is ever upon men, but they hear thee not. Thine eye is observant of all men, but they believe it not. To teach men these simple things is to make gods of them, to open up their understanding, to find thee, to know thee, and to realize thy ever presence, to become one with thee. This is the labor with thy gods and thy lords and thy holy angels. In thy name have I raised up one who is to succeed me in this thy kingdom. From thy light shall thy Orion chief weave a crown for him. With my own hands will I crown him unto thee in thy kingdom. The marshals now brought forward Pinoto of Caracas, highly learned and disciplined, and he stood before the throne of God. Thereupon Fragapati rose up, saying, Without a keynote, a number of instruments cannot be attuned to harmony. Without a faith in an all-highest person, neither angels nor mortals can live in harmony. Individuals may be strong, but many in concerted action comprise the Father's kingdoms. Neither angels nor mortals can assimilate of themselves, but all can assimilate with the Father. Everyone perfecting himself differently. Such persons are then assimilated to one another. Whoever serveth his own conception of the all highest, making himself a servant thereto, is on the right road. And in the plan of the universe, will drift into an association adapted to himself. Many such, becoming a unit, are powerful over the elements surrounding them. This belief in an all highest person is caused by weakness of spirit resulting from disease or prenatal sin or by laudation of one's own self. Such persons cannot harmonize because each one is his own self-esteemed all highest. They are without power, without unison, and without sacrifice, accomplishing little in accomplishing little good in heaven or on earth. Think not that darkness belongeth only to the earth and the lowest heavens. There are those who rise to the second resurrection and then fall into unbelief and then fall to the first resurrection and afterward become wandering spirits. And some of them even fall into hell, which is belief in evil and destruction being good. Hold on, let me read that again. And some of them even fall into hell, which is belief in evil and destruction being good, and yet others become druhas, engrossed in the affairs of mortals and in lust, teaching reincarnation, and they finally become fetals and vampires and mortals. And I'm telling y'all, look, and I was watching another, uh, what you call it, by Selah Shalom yesterday too. Remember, uh, it was last week now, I was mentioning to y'all, I'm starting to have um, re I'm reconsidering this whole reincarnation thing based on, first of all, what I was reading through here and just sitting, just thinking about some things. And um, they had even brought it up yesterday in the um, the video they did. It was like five hours. I was kind of listening to it through, sporadically throughout the day while, you know, I was going about. But they, towards the end of the video, um, and like, if you go look it up, I'll post it towards like the fifth hour somebody asked a question about that but it actually um hit on this a little bit before it's the dru the the teaching of reincarnation according to the oasby um it was is well we'll just call it like a doctrine right a, a doctrine that was um um that was that was taught by the druhas the 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 druhas remember are the evil spirits and those evil spirits were once humans, right? Um, but after they passed from the fleshly realm, they didn't continue to ascend in school and learn and everything. They just kind of stayed on the lower heavens and grafted themselves back on the humans who were here, like haunting people, haunting houses or whatever, like you see in movies. Those are them. Those are the Druhas, right? And so when the Druhas or the evil spirits graft themselves onto mortals, 
they be they they believe that they will be able to come back and live again here when that's not the case. So according to this, as I'm learning more, I'm like, hmm, we got to rethink this whole reincarnation piece because this makes a little bit of sense, you know, based on what I had already understood about the teaching of reincarnation and then applying some of the new principles that I'm learning here. I'm like, well, hmm, well that would make sense. And somebody brought up something yesterday that said nothing in, in nature. Um all those things die and they are renewed, but it's never like the same thing that comes back, you know, just like in the plant kingdom. There's not one. You have perennials that die and come back, but it's never it's like of the same seed, um, but not the exact same plant. It's always new. Right. Just like us um, with us being like physically born again. It's not really us that's being born again, although our seed look like us. But we constantly reproduce. But when I go, y'all won't see me back here again. You will see my children or what has come from me, what I've already put out while I was here. The seed will keep reproducing, but it'll never be me again. Y'all get it? So it's the same thing like with um, how people get tripped up on a reincarnation. They teach that it's them that's going to come back again. You know, um, but they they will have like different bodies, be different people, but it's the same. I'm like, hmm, okay. So I, I'm understanding that a little bit more. I'm sure this is going to get more into it. But this this is why I'm like, yeah, we, we got to revisit this. Yeah, now that I'm looking at some of this, yeah, what I had started to believe don't really make sense based on like principles of life and growth and how the spirit is to evolve, chin, grand, rising. So, um, but yeah, I, I post that video. I'm not sure if y'all was there or if y'all going to even watch the whole five hour video. I'm not even sure at what uh, point in the bit, but I just know it's towards the end. Probably like in the fifth, in the fifth hour, you can probably like skip through and probably try to find it. Or just if you got time, just let it play in your ear while you're going throughout the day. There's a lot of good stuff in it. Um, but yeah, so the 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 Druhas are the spirits that 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 started that whole reincarnation, and they're gonna come back because they don't want to leave. They want to stay here on Earth when. Yah has created us to continue to progress and go to higher levels, right? Because like what somebody said, they said the process of reincarnation keeps you trapped here on the earth, right? And it kind of goes into that whole, um, and I used to say it a lot, so I'm like, man, boy, how ignorant we are when we don't know. Um, like the scriptures will say, like we inherit the earth. But Yah has created us to continue developing. And those that stay here on the earth, it's like they, they don't want to grow. Like the way it's taught, it's, it's a whole mixture of a bunch of different stuff that I'm still trying to like unravel this frizzy ball on, you know, so. But yeah, so I, I'll read verse 14 again. Um, but you will all see as we go on. If you read ahead, you, you probably know a little bit more at this point than I do. But definitely got to revisit that reincarnation thing because I don't, I don't, at this point, as of today, I don't um, believe like we reincarnate and come back, not how, how it's being taught, right? It, it's completely wrong. Okay. Verse uh, 14, top page 203. We're still in chapter 24. Verse 14, think not that darkness belongeth only to the earth and the lowest heavens, there are those who rise to the second resurrection and then fall into unbelief and then fall to the first resurrection and after and afterward become wandering spirits. And some of them even fall into hell, which is belief in evil and destruction being good. And yet others become druhas engrossed in the uh, in the affairs of mortals and in lust teaching reincarnation and they finally become fetals and vampires on mortals whoever hath attained to the height of his own ideal is on the precipice of hell God of his forefathers too small for himself and so invented one much higher is a great benefactor a fool can ridicule the ancient person his delight is to pull down, but a wise man furnisheth a greater person. To pull down the all person is to pull down his people. 
to try to make a non-appreciable person out of Jehovah is to make one's self the opposite of a creator. To learn to create, to invest, to cast one's spirit forth with power to congregate and make is to go on the right road. To learn to pull down, to scatter, to annul, to disintegrate, to set things apart from one another, to find evil instead of good, to find folly instead of wisdom, to expose the ignorance of others instead of finding wisdom in them. Even all these follow after the first inception of disbelief in the all person. And since from such, I'm sorry, and since from this integration of the compact betwixt the creator and his children, the cord of communication is cut off with the exalted kingdoms in Ethera, they have indeed double grounds for disbelief. Nor can they comprehend how others can be believers in an all person, much less have faith in him. And the same rule applies to communities and to kingdoms as to individuals in regards to the fall, consequent, and unbelief in an all person. Let me read the whole sentence again. And the same rule applies to communities and to kingdoms as to individuals in regard to the fall, consequent, and unbelief in an all person. For a community becometh one person. A kingdom in Ethera becometh one person. A kingdom in the lower heavens becometh one person. A kingdom on earth become one person. Each and every kingdom being a single figurehead. And as many of these kingdoms as are united become one person also. Being a single figurehead of many parts, which is the perfection of each and every individual. Hence, as a single individual can cut himself off from the Father, so can a community or a kingdom, and so go down to destruction. The strongest, best man in the community is he who laboreth most to the perfect. I'm sorry, let me start over. Verse 21. The strongest, best man in the community is he who laboreth most to perfect the unit, that is, the person of the community. The strongest man in the kingdom is he who laboreth most to perfect the person of the kingdom. The strongest man in heaven is he who laboreth most to perfect the all person of heaven. The weakest of men is the opposite of these. He laboreth to show there is no all person in anything. Verily, he is already falling away from the Father. Yea, he accuseth himself, for he saith, I neither see nor hear in all person, nor believe I in one. It is a wise man who, finding he is going into disbelief too much, correcteth himself. And he is not less wise, who, finding he believeth too much, and hence investigateth not all, correcteth himself. That's good. Kind of like what we're doing now with this whole reincarnation thing, right? We was like, mm, wait a minute, we might be getting off. Let's correct, right? Let's, I'm going to read this again. It is a wise man who, finding he is going into disbelief too much, correcteth himself. And he who is not less wise, who, finding he believeth too much, and hence investigateth not at all, correcteth himself. It was said of old, first, testimony, second, belief, third, faith, and fourth, works. But I declare unto you that with the expanse of knowledge, testimony must be strengthened. For in the olden times, angels and men could be commanded to believe, and they believed. Herein have many of the lords and the gods of the lower heavens erred. For they furnish not to those beneath them the necessary testimony comporting with the advanced knowledge in heaven or on earth. A God shall be swift in devising food for meditation for angels as well as mortals without an advanced teacher 
are as well off with none at all. It is said of old that a God taught the people on the one... Hold on. Okay. It was said of old that a God taught the people on one of the stars to believe Jehovah lived in a straw and they rose in wisdom and harmony and unity. Then afterward, another God came and taught them that there was no Jehovah because forsooth he could not live in a straw. And the people fell into disbelief and in harmony and disunion, which then of these was the better God. Yet I declare unto you, they were both necessary. For without a habitation and a figure, the great spirit cannot be taught to either angels or mortals in the first place. The labor of the gods is to lead the people upward, step by step, until they learn to be gods and goddesses themselves. That's good. Audrey, shalom. Francis, shalom, shalom. Shayla, G. Grand rising. Great spirit, peace, and blessings. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> on this earth, hold on. I said I was going to do that again. Verse 27. Let me just go back to 26. It was said of old that a God taught the people on one of the stars to believe Jehovah lived in a straw, and they rose in wisdom and harmony and unity. Then afterward, another God came and taught them there was no Jehovah, because forsooth he could not live in a straw, and the people fell into disbelief and in harmony and disunion. Which then of these was the better God? Yet I declare unto you, they were both necessary. For without a habitation, for without a habitation and a figure, the great spirit cannot be taught to either angels or mortals in the first place. The labor of the gods is to lead the people upward, step by step, until they learn to be gods and goddesses themselves. On this earth, mortals were taught through stone and wooden idols, and afterward by engraved images. In some of the mixed tribes, it was necessary to teach them incarnated... In, hold on. In some of the mixed tribes, it will be necessary to teach them incarnated Jehovah in mortal form by, by sympathy for his sufferings, teach them how to follow his spirit up to heaven. But all these subterfuges shall be set aside in the Cosmon era. And after teach them how, it's reference number 24. And down at the bottom of the top, it says, teach them how to follow. Okay. Verse 29. This heaven, more than any other heaven of the earth, will be regarded by the Ethereum kingdoms. Beneath you, even on this part of heaven, will mortals first espouse the Father's kingdom. Of all things, let your labor be first of all to sow the seed of belief in an all person, the great spirit. As ye now sow and build Jehovah's kingdom in your heaven, so in the coming of the cosmic era will the same teaching take root in the souls of mortals. Nor shall ye under any circumstance permit gods or lords or saviors to be established as worshipful beings either in these heavens or on any part of the earth. For this land is dedicated by Jehovah for the overthrow of all idols of God and Lord and Savior and of everything that is worshipped, save Jehovah, the great spirit. Neither shall any of these idols be established with the effect in these heavens or on this land. But be ye most circumspect to establish Jehovah the light of light, the all person in the souls of angels and mortals. Fragapati cease, but signal for Hapacha, or I'm sorry, Fragapati ceased, but signal for Hapacha to ordain Pinoto, God of Ipsiyoji. Hapacha rose up, saying, Pinoto, son of Jehovah, 
Thou has been chosen to be God of Ipsioji for 600 years. And even after, if Jehovah so will, thou hast passed the examination and standest above all others. Thou hast been favored with much traveling in heaven. And for thy benefit, many swift messengers, many swift messengers from the em emancipated worlds have explained to thee the dominions of the great chiefs. He through whose fields this world is now tra traveling, have stood up before thee. He has spoken to thee and thy people. Heed thou his words, and thou shalt be one with his kingdom in wisdom and power. By proxy, I have visited the Aetherian worlds thou hast not. Being one with this chief, thou wilt inure to all light, and soon thou shalt visit his places by proxy also. And after proxy, it has a reference letter I. And remember the letters, you're back to the end of the chapter, and which is on page 236. Okay. Okay, and I says... It is most likely that proxy here has some meaning of which mortals cannot conceive, perhaps dreams, perhaps Suez, 1882 edition. Proxy might also be a reference to traveling subjectively as opposed to objectively. Angels can visit a location in person objectively or in thought subjectively, in spirit Traveling subjectively in thought is not just imagination as it would be for us mortals. Angels visiting a place in thought embrace a virtual reality that is incomprehensible to mortals, but is in every way real to angels. They do not just imagine what might be there. They see it in fact. Refer to objective presence and subjective presence in glossary. Hold on one second, y'all. Okay. Thought I had to sneeze. That just blew my nose. Trina. Hey, girl. Hey. All right, y'all. Boy. Verse 36. And at the end of 600 years, thou and thy harvest will be called for by the Ethereum host. Okay. And at the end of 600 years, Thou and thy harvest will be called for by the Ethereum host. Be thou ready for them, and erst thou depart, thou shalt raise up one sufficient to take thy place, and thou shalt bestow him. Pinoto said, Thy will and Jehovah's be done. That which is given me to do, will I do with all my wisdom and strength, so help me, O Jehovah. Hapaka said, By virtue of thy wisdom, Power and love, O Jehovah, vested in me, do I this, thy son, ordain God of Ipsioji for the period of 600 years. Be thou with him, O Jehovah, and may he in his works glorify thee forever. Amen. Pinoto said, which I accept and covenant with thee, O Jehovah, for thy glory forever. Amen. They see in ours now saying, thou light and person. Approved and sung on high, Jehovah, our God, Hapaka, Jehovah, thou hast called him. Welcome, Pinoto, thou alone, Jehovah, remainest forever. Glory, glory be to thee, O thou creator. 
The light gathered brilliantly over Fragapati's head, and when the music ceased, the voice of Jehovah spake out of the light, saying, In the first days I blew my breath upon the lands of the earth, and man became a living soul. Then, in the second time, I moved my hand upon the earth, and man went forth in power. Thus near hath my voice approached the earth. Be ye steadfast in my commandments. The time shall surely come, and in the third season, when my voice shall be heard by mortals. The voice ceased, and then Fragapati took the light in his hands, as one would take fine flax, and he turned it about thrice, and lo, a crown was woven, most brilliant, but of reddish hue. He said, Crown of thy crown, O Jehovah, have I woven for thy son, God of Ipsioji. He handed it to Hapacha, who said, And in thy name, O Father, I crown him, second God of Ipsioji, six hundred years. Be thou with him, O Father. Amen. And that was the end of chapter 24. And we're at, what, 37 minutes? I think we'll keep reading. Yeah, let me keep reading. Oh, okay, chapter 25. It now being the end of the fourth day, Fragapati commanded the host to embark in the avalanche, and the marshals conducted them in, taking first the sons and daughters of Ipsioji, being 60 million, the next Zared Hoans, 10 million, and then Fragapati's attendants, being mostly Ethereans, 5 million. When those were aboard, Fragapati and Hoab and Yatanti and Hapaka rose up, and after making the sign of the setting sun, went down and sat at the foot of the throne. God, that was Pinoto, went down and took Fragapati's hand, saying, Arise, O chief, the father calleth. Fragapati rose up and stood aside. Next, God raised Yatanti, and he stood aside, and then he raised Hoab, and he stood aside, and now came the greatest trial of all. He took Hapacha's hand, saying, Arise, O God, great Jehovah calleth thee, go thy way in his. But they both burst into tears and fell into each other's arms. Hapacha said, O Father, Pinoto said, His will be done. And now the light gathered brilliantly over the scene. Fragapati moved forward, then Yatanti, then Hoab, and next Hapaka. Pinoto resumed the throne, the Isinars chanted, and the firelight of the higher heavens descended over all the place. Like a sweet dream. <coughs> Excuse me. Like a sweet dream. The scene closed. Fragapati and his host were gone. Like a bee that is laden with honey, flying from a field of flowers to its home, so returned Fragapati with his avalanza laden to Horati, swiftly through the vault of heaven, a shooting star in Jehovah's hand. A Thavra, god of Horati, an assistant to Fragapati, knew that the avalanza was coming and that Hapaka and his host were aboard and he determined to provide a glorious reception. So for the space of a thousand miles, he caused pillars of fire to be erected in two rows so that the avalanche should pass between them. And near the pillars, he stationed trumpeters and harpers, one million divided into 100 groups. And they were so arranged that when the avalanche passed them, they could come aboard. Now during the absence of Fragapati, many of the spirits who had been rescued from torture and madness in the hills of Aosu had been restored to consciousness, more than 150 million of them. Of these, Athavra said, Clothe ye them in most gaudy apparel, and let them be the bearers of perfumes and flowers and torches as presents for the Ehin host of Hapaka. And the lights shall be lowered at the place of landing, 
to make it acceptable to those newly raised who are aboard. Athavra said, as for more room within the walls of light, it shall be rated seven. But when Fragapati hath ascended the throne, it shall be raised to nine. And in those nine, and in, I'm sorry, and in those days, nine in Horati was 50% of the capacity of the endurance in the plateau. Jehovah had said, if they raised the light, it would be more acceptable to my Ethereum host, for they have dwelt a long time near the earth and are thirsting for Ethereum light. But yet consider ye, here are thousands of millions of atmospherians who cannot endure the Ethereum light, but delight in a lower percent. See to it then that the walls of light protect my host in the dark on one side, but raise ye the great, but raise ye the great to nine within. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, man. Okay. All right, you gonna kiss me? I ain't gonna kiss you. All right, babe, let me see. Yeah, my husband really ever gets sick. I'm like, bro, you sure? He's like, yep, I know how to kill it. Yeah, and he don't really ever, ever get sick. Okay. Athavra said, there shall be flights of stairs leading over the walls of Moru, and they shall be white and illumined on that day, which will be sufficient for dividing the people according to the light suited to them. The Ehims with Hapacha will go over the walls, for they, for they, enter their corporal cities in the same way. Besides, they are capable of enduring the light, but the Ihuans with Hapaka will desire to remain without. For them, prepare ye a place of delight and rest. But in regard to the Ethereans, Athavra gave no orders, for they were capable of perceiving all necessary things and without instruction. All right, y'all, that is the end of chapter 25. Hold on one second again. I got my nose again, y'all. the baby all right y'all chapter 26 ezra shalom it's today pentecost 6 12 22 everyone seems to be observing it on different days when did you i'm gonna be honest with y'all i ain't observe it <laughs> as as i'm growing some of y'all have probably picked that up already. As I'm growing and literally just searching for truth, some some things I'm not telling y'all what to do, right? I'm really not. Y'all y'all should know that by now if you've been here long enough. But as I grow and learn different things, I like to adjust immediately once I understand. Some things I just stop doing. I really do. Because it's like, why am I still doing this? And I know... Like, and if I keep doing something that I know it's like, okay, when you were a child, it was okay for you to read the children's stories and act like a child, right? But now that you're a little bit older, it's time to put the fairy tales away and, and walk in the truth of what you know, right? That's my whole stance on everything, right? Take that how you will, apply it how you will. 
if you don't want to come to the channel no more, I completely understand. But it's just some things I, I find it hard to... I find it hard to keep doing something that I know that um, I ain't going to say that I shouldn't be doing, but it, they're good teaching aids. I'm not telling anybody to stop celebrating any kind of anything, feast days or nothing like that. Is not, that is not what I'm telling y'all, right? Because they're, they're good teaching aids and it's needed. I think it's needed for when it's needed, right? But as you grow, like sometimes... Like, I don't need to use my fingers to count anymore. They were teaching aids as I was growing, learning how to work the math out in my mind. But as I get older and I get more familiar with it, I kind of put those things away, right? You know how sometimes when children learn, they're using manipulative blocks and stuff, using sticks, drawing it out. It's needed for that time. But when you don't need it anymore, you don't need it anymore. Not saying that you should tell everybody no, because some people still need to learn and go through those phases so they can learn as they grow, right? Kind of like what it said here. Um, um, hold on. The verse 24 on page 205, when it was talking about, I'll just read this again. Verse 26, it was said of old that a God taught people on the earth. It was said of old that a God taught the people on one of the stars to believe that Jehovah lived in a straw and they rose in wisdom and in harmony and in unity. Then afterward, another God came and taught them that there was no Jehovah because forsooth he could not live in a straw and the people fell into disbelief and in harmony and disunion, which then of these was the better God. Yet I declare unto you, they were both necessary. For without a habitation and a figure, the great spirit cannot be taught to either angels or mortals in the first place. The labor of the gods, the labor of the gods is to lead the people upward step by step until they learn to be gods and goddesses themselves. And then um, down I read this next verse. On this earth, mortals were taught through stone and wooden idols and afterward by engraved images. In some of the mixed tribes, it will be necessary to teach them incarcerated Jehovah in mortal form and by sympathy for his sufferings to teach them how to follow his spirit up to heaven. But all these subterfuges shall be set aside in the Cosmon era. We're in the Cosmon era, right? So all the things that we learned about JC and all that, we, we put all those things aside. We ain't throwing out the baby with the bath water. We keeping a lesson, but we do understand that a lot of these were stories and fairy tales to help us to understand. Just like we teach principles to children with stories, the same thing in religious circles or whatever. They give you stories to help you grasp the concepts. When you got the concepts down, you can keep the stories if you want, but don't worship the stories like they were real. You know, some of the people were real. A lot of things were added for teaching sake for the stories to help you really get it, to help the story stick, you know. Um, and that's what people are trying to come up out of now, like holding on and loving. I mean, you can. I love the stories. I, I love the stories. But I no longer worship the stories like they were real because I realize a lot of them and a lot of people were not real. Some were, some were not. They were added for the story and the grandeur sake to help you understand and Help the story, the principles of the story sink in. So I'm the wrong person to be asking about Pentecost today. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just my honest truth. You know? Okay. Chapter 26. Oh, yeah. 49 minutes. We'll read this one chapter and then we'll go ahead and end it today. All right. Chapter 26. When Fragapati entered the road of fire with his avalanza, where Athavra had stationed the musicians and groups of furlers, the whole suburb broke loose from all bounds of prosperity. So great was their delight, and they shouted and sang with the trumpeters with most exalted in enthusiasm. Uh, let me just say this too about what I just said. Now, the one I probably stick to religiously for the, the resting of my body is the Sabbath. Now, you ask me about the Sabbath all day long, right? Because I do believe you need to rest your body, right? And I like to line my Sabbath up with the, the clock in the sky, right? Even um, um, this talks about the, the four days of the moon, right? Which is referring to the four cycles of the moon where you get four Sabbaths in a moon cycle. Those are the four days of the moon and it repeats every single month, right? 
So I religiously stick to the Sabbath. You know, because your, your body needs rest. If it don't rest, you start sniffing and all this other stuff, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, okay. I'll just start this verse over again. When Fragapati entered the road of fire with his avalanza, where Athabra had stationed the musicians and groups of furlers, the whole suborb broke loose from all bounds of prosperity. So great was their delight, and they shouted and sang with the trumpeters with most exalted enthusiasm. Many of them entered the Orion state, and not a few, and not a few, even the Nirvanian, and they became even as gods and goddesses by their entrancement, seeing, hearing, and rationalizing, even to the third rate above the brides and bridegrooms of Jehovah. And after um their entrancement, after their, it actually has reference number 25. And the reference is by their own entrancement. Okay. And they became even as gods and goddesses by their entrancement, seeing, hearing, and rationalizing even to the third rate above the brides and bridegrooms of Jehovah. These were but spasmatic conditions of light from which they return in course of time, being able to give descriptions of their visions. For Jehovah so created man with spells of clearness, uh, with spells of clearness far in advance of his growth, the which he having realized, he returned to his normal condition to prepare himself constitutionally. Let me read that again. These were but spasmatic conditions of light from which they returned in course of time, being able to give descriptions of their visions. For Jehovah so created man with spells of clearness far in advance of his growth, the which he having realized, he returned to his normal condition to prepare himself constitutionally along the road on either side were models and sayings peculiar to the hosts of Hapaka and to mortals of Gautama. When Hapaka saw these, he said, How is it possible whence derived these gods this information? But the light came to his own soul, saying, The wise and good sayings of men below are borne by Jehovah's swift messengers to realms above. Hoab stood near, Hoab stood nearby, and the um, uh, I'm skipping a lot. Hoab stood nearby and heard what Hapacha said, and Hoab said, "How can men and spirits be inspired to wise and good sayings? Who had thought to erect such signboards on the road to all light? And yet, what darker deeds are done when the soul of man?" findeth curses and evil words to vent his awful sins and walls himself around with horrid imprecations, the which to face in time after and be appalled at the havoc of his own deadly weapons. How few indeed comprehend the dire thrust of hateful words, imagining them but wind to pass away and be seen no more which are placarded. Yeah, I think that's what they say. But which are placarded on the sign placard. Mm, maybe that's placard. Okay, let me read the whole sentence again. I think that's placard. How few indeed comprehend the dire thrust of hateful words, imagining them but wind to pass away and to be seen no more, but which are placard on the signboard of heaven, and his fruit sent to market, the poison dealt out of his mouth to his brother man, a man threw up the spear, deadly, but it falleth on the earth and lieth there, but words and sayings are mere I'm sorry, but words and sayings are more potent, scoring deep in the soul of things. Fair indeed is it with thee, O Hapaka, and with thy host also, 
with yonder pure scroll to enter Horati. Fair indeed is it with thee, O Hapaka, and with thy host also, with yonder pure scroll to enter Horati. As fast as the ship passed the lights, the Ethereum musicians came aboard, being anxious to meet Hapaka and his host, especially the Ehims, and to congratulate them on being the first harvest from the lowest heaven at the end of a cycle. And strange to say, there were just twice as many as Sethenes had prepared in the first dawn on earth. Fragapati called the swift messengers belonging to the rose of God in Ethera, and he said unto them, Go ye to Sethenes, whose fields lay in the rose of God, and say unto him, Greeting in the name of Jehovah. The earth hath reached Ab Absad and Gumachla, home of Fragapati, who sendeth love and joy on behalf of 60 million, first harvest of ha Haki, grade 65. Of these messengers, 400 departed, leaving a reserve of 800 who continued on the Avalanza. The Druhas, who were arrayed in gaudy attire, withdrew a little from the landing, fearing the light. When the ship drew near the walls and was made fast, the marshals of Moru came to the front. Two million as an escort to conduct all who chose over the ascending stairs. And so great was the faith of Hapacha's host that over 50 million of them passed within the sea of fire, singing, Glory be to thee, O Jehovah, creator of the worlds. Seeing this great faith in them, Athavra commanded red and blue lights to favor them. And there was not one of the whole number that qualified or turned from the light. And now was beholden to many of them their first view of the glories and powers of gods and goddesses. Moru was illuminated in every part. The structure of the temple, its extent and magnificence and conception with its hundreds of thousands of mirrors and lenses, its transparent opaque crystals, translucent and opaque circles and arches, hundreds of millions, the which, when viewed from any one place, was unlike when viewed from another place, as if each position were striving to outdo the others in beauty and perfection. So that were a person to walk for a thousand years in the temple, he would see, he would every moment see, as it were, a new place of surprising grandeur. And so wonderfully, it was arranged that the faces of 1,000 million people could be seen from any place a person might be, and yet all these people constituted a part and principle in the building, being as being as jewel stones created by Jehovah for the ornamentation of his celestial abodes. Hoab, always quick to speak, said, O oh, that angels and mortals would strive to make of themselves such jewels as these. Hapaka spake not, being overwhelmed with the beauty and magnificence. Yatanti said, When thou art on the throne, Fragapati, I will leave for the kingdom of Yatanti. Here then I will take my leave. Fragapati shook hands with him, saying, Jehovah be with thee. So Yatanti remained where he was, but Hoab and Hapaka continued on with Fragapati. All eyes were turned to them, and especially to Hapaka, whose persistence and faith in Jehovah had won the lower heavens to wisdom and love. And as they moved toward the throne, great Athavra rose up, smiling, holding out his hands to receive them. Next, and back of Athavra, were the five goddesses, Ethro, Uchi, Rok, Guseya, of Hemitsa, hold on, 
let me let me say that again. Next, in back of Athavra were the five goddesses, Ethro of Uch, Uchi and Rok, Gusia of Himitza of the valley of Mibold in Ethera, Cetesia of Wol Tabak, the one time home of Fuvitil, what? Fuvitil? The one time home of Fuvitil, Citivi of Nu, Porti, Aga, and Renava of the swamps of Dolegi. In South Suyark of Rhodes, near Zata and Hichawau. In the South Ethereum Vault of Absad. Oh, that was so hard to say. And the goddesses also rose up with extended hands. And now, because of the brilliancy of their presence, the throne became a scene of hallowed light. And threads thereof extended to all the council members. And by these were radiated outward so that every person... And the temple of Jehovah was connected to the throne, which made every spoken word plain to all. Athavra said, In Jehovah's name, welcome, O Fragapati, and thy host with thee. The goddesses repeated the same words, and they were echoed by the entire audience. Fragapati said, In the name, in thy name, O Jehovah, am I delivered to my loves. Be thou with us, O Father, that we may glorify thee. Receive ye, O my people, Papaka, son of Jehovah, who rose up and stood in the dark all night long in faith in Jehovah. Behold, I have delivered him in dawn and his host with him. And now there appeared, rising like a new sun, Jehovah's light beyond the throne, reddish tinge, emblem of the western light in honor of And it rose and stood above Fragapati's head in great brilliancy. Then spake Jehovah out of the light, saying, With my breath create I alive the earthborn child. With my hand quicken I the newborn spirit. And with my light illumine I the soul of my faithless. Behold, I dwell in the all highest place and in the lowest of created things. Whoever findeth me, I find also. Whoever proclaimeth me, I proclaim a return. Hapacha, my son, savior of men, of my light shalt thou be crowned. The voice ceased. And now Fragapati advanced to the midst of the throne and took of the light and fashioned a crown and placed it on Hapacha's head, saying, Crown of thy crown, O Jehovah, crown I thy son. In thy light shall he be wise and powerful with love to all thy created beings, henceforth forever. The goddesses then received them, and after due ceremonies, they all took their seats. Fragapati in the midst of the throne, Athavra resigned at once during the stay of Fragapati. The Isinars now chanted, Glory be to thee, O all light, the person of every kingdom, high and low, who hath brought our brothers and sisters home. By natural impulse of thanks, Hapacha's host, 50 million, rose up and responded, singing, To thee, O Jehovah, how shall our souls find words? Thy sons and daughters love, how can we recompense? Make us light and clear, O Father, spotless before them in sea. But the anthems were long and sung with brilliancy, rejoicing and responding, Millions to millions as an opera of high heaven. When the music ceased, Fragapati said, With the close of the dawn of Dan, these hosts shall be received as brides and bridegrooms of Jehovah and ascend with us to the regions of Gu, Gu Machala in Ethera. The apportioners will therefore divide them into groups in Horeti 
with Ethereum teachers to prepare them. That this may be accomplished, I proclaim one day's recreation to assemble on the next day in order of business. The marshals then proclaimed as had been commanded, and the host went into recreation. The Ethereans rushing to Hapacha's atmosphere. Hold on, let me read that again. The marshals then proclaimed as had been commanded, and the host went into recreation. The Ethereans rushing to Hapacha's atmospherians with great glee, everyone desiring some of them. And that, my beautiful people, is where we will end today at the end of chapter 26 in the book of Fragapati. We're also at an hour and six minutes. All right, y'all. So with that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed the reading for today. Page number. Huh. I'm glad I met. I can end it. Thank you, girl. I'm glad I, I made it through without hacking up a lung or something. <laughs> Even though I had to take a couple breaks. All right, y'all. Definitely, I should be way better tomorrow than what I am today. I'm still going on with all my herbs and stuff completely. Getting myself cleansed out and being back to 100% completely. So with that being said, thank y'all for hanging out with me today while I got through this. It is June 12, 2022, Sunday, day 131 of year four of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. Some of the four-year consecutive day count. Day 1,149, and we read pages 202 to 211 in the OASPI. All right, beautiful people. With that being said, may y'all continue to bless you with good health. May all you, all of you, because I know some of you um, um, were uh, down for a day or so, you know. May y'all bless you all with health and healing and wisdom to keep your bodies high in health, right? And you might be a little deficient in iron as well. So check on that if you can't. If you don't know how to check on it, just eat something that's rich in iron, right? Um, which will help boost your, your your health back up real quick. Matter of fact, that's something I posted something right before I got live today by Selah Shalom TV. He's look, if you if you know anything about Yaki, everything that you hear him say in his little ten minute video that I posted. Today will sound really familiar. Um, but also he he was posting before Yaki was, but um he didn't mention anything about Dr. Savy, but Dr. Savy also talked about that when people came to him and they were like sick, the first thing he would give them was some iron, right? And it would immediately bring them back to one hundred. So a lot of times that's what, what we're missing. We become deficient in iron, and that's something we need to um we need to uh, make sure we're included in our diet. And if you eat a plant-based diet, not vegan, but plant-based, getting most of your substance from fresh fruits and veggies and stuff, no matter how, well, it does matter how you prepare them. Because um, you don't want to cook away all the good stuff. You know, try and eat your fruits and veggies as raw as you can most of the time. You know, sometimes I know if you need some warm, you need to put some um, sauteed or steamed, something hot in your belly. Um do what you got to do, but listen to your body. Everybody's body is different. So as long as you learn to listen to your body, you should be able to, you know, give your body what it needs, right? And you can, you won't be lacking anything by um, living a plant-based lifestyle, you know? Um, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it for today. Thank everybody. I, I want to thank everybody that checked on me. Who I was out for a couple of days while we took our two day sabbatical. And when I was live Thursday, I said it was going to come back Saturday, but I, I didn't want to count Thursday as one of the days, even though that video for Thursday was only 16 minutes. I said it's Saturday, but I said a two day sabbatical, meaning two full days. So Friday, no reading, which also meant Saturday was day number two, no reading, and brought us back here till today. Right? Okay. So I know I, I screwed that up Thursday when I said we'll be back Saturday. I should have thought just a little bit more, right? We would have been back Sunday today. All right. So with that being said, I'm just running my mouth now, y'all. Yeah, he's really, really knowledgeable, um, Audrey. I, I just learned about him. Matter of fact, Francis, I think, yeah, Francis was the one that told me about him uh, a, a couple weeks ago. I'm like, who is this guy, right? 
because I had I hadn't seen anybody talking about the um OWASP. Matter of fact, it was another person here who mentioned the OWASP. They come in from time to time. They're not normally live, or they'll they'll watch the video later. But they asked me had I ever heard heard about the OWASP. I said no, I I never even heard the word before. So it might be something you might be interested in. You might want to check it out. So I looked it up. You know, people give me stuff. I I go look it up. You know. So I was, I'm like, hmm, this is pretty interesting, you know. So I got it, and I'm like, oh, wow. And what I was reading about it, and, and I'm like, oh, wow, you know. So that that's that's what we're reading now, you know. So I, you know, I've really only come to learn about the um, um uh, probably like two months before we actually started reading it. And then I didn't know of anybody else. I, I mean, I saw a couple of videos. I think it was like... uh another channel OSP TV or something like that it's a guy that he talks about it. he doesn't read it but he he goes through like some of the chapters and he'll show some of the stuff up there um but I think I had consumed all his videos I'm like oh this is really really good but other than that he was like the only one that I knew about until Francis mentioned uh Selah Shalom TV I was like oh snap I was like dude has been here for years talking about the OSP but he wasn't coming up when I was typing the OASP and like the search engine in um in YouTube. It was only that OASP University channel that was coming up. So I'm thinking, I was like, oh, that's not nobody. I'm like, how how is this possible? Nobody's talking about this. Um, but apparently a lot of people know about it. They just not on social media and um OASP University and Selah Shalom, he's been here like for like I got, I'm looking at videos that he did like 10, 11, 12 years ago about the old wives. I'm like, man, dude, been here for a minute. We we newcomers to the party. <laughs> this is our first time reading through it. But it's so good, right? It's so good. And it, it, it from what I've read so far, it's helped me kind of shake some things out that I was misunderstanding, you know, coming from like the church background and transitioning into the Hebrew roots and everything. It helped me shake a lot of that misunderstanding I had away. It helped me line up a lot of things. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Now that makes sense. A lot of the things that I had studied in the book of Enoch about the the, the, um, the demon spirits and all that stuff in chapter 15, the Oasby brings like absolute clarity to a lot of those things that I was still studying and um, searching and just trying to figure out. So, you know, I'm grateful for you guys when y'all share stuff because had y'all not mentioned, just even said the word Owaspi, it would never been on my radar. I would have never looked into it. And catchy word, Owaspi was a catchy word to me. I'm like, no, I never heard of Owaspi. I, I never heard that word before. But it was so catchy, it caused me to look into it because I'm, I'm like this words person. Who would have known, right? You could have said that word. I'm like, what, what, what did you say? You know, but I don't know. Y'all know how I operate and you know, I would have. That's a word I would have wanted looked up, you know, because I would have tried to use it. <laughs> oh, but how it caught me and my attention. All right, y'all. That's it. I'm done. I'm just running off at the mouth now. I'm about to get out of here. I love y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bright and early. 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. May y'all bless you all. Love you. Bruce.